Hans Frank, you may not know him by that name, but during the Second World War, he was a key member of Adolf Hitler's inner circle. To millions of Jews, he will forever be known as the Butcher of Poland. To his youngest son, Nicholas, he will always be the monster responsible for mass murder. Nicholas has spent his life speaking out against his father's atrocities. He was in Toronto recently for Holocaust Education Week, and Melissa sat down for a very candid interview with him. Please tell us who your father was. My father started his political career uh, becoming very early a member of the Nazi party in 1923. And then by chance he became the private lawyer of Hitler during uh, the time before he took over the power in Germany in 1933. So he stayed in the party. He fell in love with Hitler and uh, did everything to please Hitler. He got the phone call when we invaded Poland. Hans Frank should take over the civil government of the occupied Poland. And he was by law the deputy of Hitler in this occupied country. So he was responsible for every, for every killing. So then at what age do you either learn or understand the role that your father played during the war and specifically with the demise of millions of people. This last thing I found out later. It started in 1945, but before, during the powerful time of my father as the governor general and my mother the queen of Poland, I had a very happy childhood, as you can imagine. Everybody. Uh, were giving us, my brother and me, a lot of toys. We are really uh, very well off. And after the war, when uh, was suddenly my father was arrested, he has fled from Krakow to Upper Bavaria, and the Americans came a certain Lieutenant Stein, German Jew, who were coming back with the United States Army. He arrested him, and that was a little bit of surprise also for me. And then the first uh, now democratic newspaper came out, Neue Zeitung in German, new newspaper from the Americans. And there were always pictures in it of dead people, concentration camp people, also uh, kids of my age, then six, seven years old. And it was written onwards, Poland. So suddenly this Poland, which I thought of it was really ours, <laughs> suddenly my father was connected with something evil. He then faced trial. He then died as a part of his sentencing. But you were able to talk to him one last time before his execution. What does a father and son share in those last moments? No love. I came knowing that this will be my last visit. And uh, I was sitting on my mother's lap, and he was sitting behind a window with small holes so that you can understand each other. Besides him was an American guard in a white helmet. And he lied to me. He smiled at me and said, hi, Nikki. Uh, soon we will celebrate Christmas in our house and I was looking forward for it and I was sitting there and saying, why is he lying? Why is he lying? He knows that he will be dead very soon. And that was very disappointing for me. So How have you dealt over your lifetime living in the shadows, per se, of your father's choices, mistakes, sins? We were more, more than mistakes, we were really crimes. He was a mass murderer. The more and more I found out, the more and more I despised my father. I understand that you actually carry around a photograph of your father. By chance, do you have this photo with you? Yes. My daughter, my grandchildren, my beautiful wife, the first picture they ever had given to me. And there he comes, the mass murderer, my father, wow. shortly after the execution. He's still smiling at me right now after the election, and his bloody ideas are still alive in Germany. So therefore, I have it with me 
on the one hand to make sure he's dead, and on the other hand always seeing again this bloody guy isn't dead. He's still alive in so many brains of the Germans. What does that mean, that last part? I mean, I'm intrigued by that, that you say that his ideas are still alive and well. Yes, uh, because the last election brought a new right-wing party. They got 13% uh, six uh, vote for, of all the voters. What makes me furious is the Germans, because of their unique crimes against humanity, we should know better how to deal with foreigners, how to deal with refugees, how to deal with our past. We didn't learn anything from all the crimes we have committed during 1933 till 1945. Could you ever forgive your father? No, never. Why should I? He was responsible for all the killings and he knew he wasn't an, uh, a big ideologist. In his youth diary, there was not a single sentence against the Jews. But Hitler said the Jews, so he did everything in his power to kill Jews. Not personally, but as a white color criminal. Also, after one year of a trial with all the witnesses, and even the first film they showed to the defendants about Auschwitz. He never really regret what he has done. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, for more information on Holocaust education, well, you can visit our website, yourmorning.ca.